there's a request for PLVN which is Pluton Resources and it gives me a chance to do some clarifications on uh, pitchforks and shift pitchforks and modified shift forks and stuff so uh, I'll just give it a go. Um, we're going to start this one by putting in, oh, we're going to do a manual pitchfork so I'm just going to put in a fib scale here. Um, if you notice there's two lows that are the same whenever I've got a choice I always use the second one, the more recent one, it seems to give me better results and as you know we do low high low or high low high low pitchforks this one we've got a high as swing number one so for the anchor point we're going to use a low and that's the low immediately before it so that's the one we're going to use and I draw a median line. Now all that's not too impressive so far you so see what the hell is he doing so I better put you out of your misery and I'll just clone that line there and we'll move it down to the bottom of that swing. Now magically price comes down and supports on this line and if I clone that line again and then move it up to the top you can see that that's really a standard pitch, pitchfork structure where we've got the low, high, low. Okay, so that tells us that price is in this channel and mostly it's inhabiting the lower half of that channel. So we might try a little bit of analysis and that for this one I'll actually use the pitchfork tool and we'll select red. Now what Andrews um, did was he taught a lot. One of his students was called Jeremy Schiff. I've called him called I've heard him call lots of things in my time, but the latest thing that Tim Moore says is his name was Jeremy or Jerome or something like that. So what he uh, did was he said you get a big long move like that and it upsets the predictive ability of a pitchfork. Um, basically pitchforks are a leading indicator. So what he said was if you took this vertical below swing one, you know, well in this case it's below swing one, but if you took the vertical from swing one and you used the halfway mark as the anchor for this, the pitchfork, what you could do is this. And I'll just adjust that up. Now as you can see, price is following the trend established by that pitchfork quite nicely along here and it even has this little gap here where it gaps across then it back tests then it goes off and does other stuff and what that tells me is that Jerome Schiff or Jeremy Schiff he knew what he was talking about and like if I had used a standard pitchfork with this which is going from the swing high it wouldn't have had much predictive ability if I use the shift pitchfork that has quite a, a bit of predictive ability. Okay, so we'll go through a bit of analysis. Once we break out, we try and draw an, another pitchfork. So I'll just bung in some. Oh, we might as well skip the idea of using the last one within the the the, the former pitchfork. We'll just go straight to this one. There's a pair of lows there, so what we'll do is we'll pick the second one as I said before and if we go to the lowest low we find that that's not supporting very well at all so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look around for something else now we just did the uh, the old shift pitchfork when shift gave this idea to Andrews Andrews had a look at it and what he said was it this works quite well in a number of situations however if you use the center point quite often the center point works a lot better than the shifts alignment now in this particular case it doesn't but if I try that with the blue fork because we know that that's the center of the swing and I move it up there that's not too bad at all what that's doing is it's, it's showing me that there's a I'll zoom in a little bit. 
we've got these two bars coming up and testing it. We've got this one zooming through and coming back. We've got a gap there. We've got a back test there. So that's actually not too bad at all. Um, if I had have used shifts version, we'll just put another fib scale on it. And we'll use that alignment. Now that starts to look really interesting. We've got hits here and we've got a good price cap there. So this alignment here is the original shift. This alignment here at the center point, that's the modified shift that came from, from Andrews himself. Okay, now let's go and have a look over at this side. I'll go back to a, an original shift on this one. We're going to try and map this swing to see what's going on here. I'll come in a little bit and we'll switch to I think purple. We haven't used purple. Okay. Uh, use the high. Use. Oops. Change the tool. Change back to a pitchfork. put them in roughly and I can just move them around to align them properly. Okay, now we normally go down to the, the low. <coughs> in that case it doesn't do a bad sort of a job. You can see that this is broken up here. So we might, like, the question would be which is the swing low proceeding here? We've used the ultimate low, you can't go any lower than that, but they've got this one over here which we could have used and if I look at that that provides pretty good support along that line there so maybe I should be using this alignment instead but if I look above that I've got a swing low here and I've got a swing low there so while I'm around I'll just try that one that one fits even better along here and it also picks up a gap and gap forks are another thing that you can use or I can try this one if I try that one, and it's not quite square, suddenly we pick up that very nicely there. This median line is through the gap and that upper line is pretty well capping price around here. So if it was me, that's the alignment that I would adopt. If we assume that that alignment is correct and that bar there is um, is a real thing. We might even try doing an extra one just to see what's going to go on. Here we've got the gap again. The median line is straight through the middle of the gap so that gives me a fair bit of confidence. We've got a crossing of this line and this line. I would say that almost certainly that is a target it's going to come back, it's going to see if it finds support on that medium line it's going to probably not find support because it's a very steep one it's going to then come down here and test this the bears in this case are going to be targeting this area here and they're going to try and break it down through that area below that it's got support from this medium line and that's got a fairly good chance of holding if it doesn't hold then obviously you're going to be going down to this long blue line or this long green line because they're longer term support. Um, what we'll do is we'll move back over to the main chart for this one and we'll have a look. You can see all this stuff's fairly small now. Um, okay, that's about as good as that gets. If we're looking at the stock we can see that the slow stock, I've used 20 period here, it's pointing down. There's a higher high and a lower high. That's negative divergence. Um, this one here would map to around about there somewhere. Price rose, the stock went down. The sell signal is actually when the stock crosses the 80. But in this particular case, maybe it'll go back up and test this line. Maybe it'll come straight back down. Who knows? It's one of those wait and think, see things. Um, if it was me, I would be pretty much 
out of this one now. Anyhow, that's all from me.